Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to convert a data frame into JSON. In the previous video, I showed you how to read JSON data frame. Today, it's going to be converting that data frame into JSON. So there are a couple of things we are going to cover. We are going to cover the types of orientation. We are going to co cover double precision. We are going to cover compression. We are going to cover index and we are going to cover indent, indentation. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So let me go ahead and do df.head here. So I have a data frame that I already loaded and this data frame just has a single row. This will be sufficient for what we are doing for now. And um, these principles can be applied even if you are using, even if your data frame has multiple rows but just for simplicity i'm going to use the data frame that has a single row so to begin right we can simply use df dot to json if you don't provide a path then the output is presented as a string so in this case if i just do df dot to json and let's go ahead and run this as you can see here this data frame has been converted into a JSON file and is presented as a string because I didn't provide an ad a path for the output. So when it comes to converting data frames to JSON, um, there are different orientation and the orient format will determine how the data will come out. And these are the different options you have for orientation. You have the split, and this is what your data is going to look like. You have the index, then um, you have index, column, columns, then you have data and then value. Then you have records and you have index, you have columns, you have values, you have table. All right. And we are going to go through um, the different orientations. So you see what it looks like. This way you will know which one you're actually looking for. And the default orientation is columns. So as you can see here, um, we have columns and the output is like column. You have the index, you have the value. And as you can see here, um, up that's what's represented up here, right? So, column, so here we didn't provide any orientation. We didn't provide any other parameters. And what we have here, we have the column, number of songs. We have the index, which is zero. And then we have the value, which is one. Then we have the next column, artist. ID, we have the row number, which is the index, that's zero, and then we have the value. So columns is the default orientation for converting data frame to JSON. But you can choose how your data comes out. Let's look at the different options. Let's start by looking at the different orientations. So this is the split orientation. If we go ahead and run this, and as you can see, this is what it comes out to be. You have columns, and it gives you the list of columns. You have index zero, and then it gives you the data in that index. So if we had more than one column, if you had more than one row, you would um, see this repeatedly. So you have columns, and then the value for those columns and then you have index zero data and then you have index one data index two data so forth and so on that is what your data will look like let's go to the next orientation the next orientation we're gonna look at is the records orientation and when we run this code right here uh, the comes out to be orientation so what we have here we have number of songs then the value number of songs which is the column then the value and um, the artist id which is the column then the value um another column and then the value so basically that is how it comes out to be so in this situation in the record orientation it doesn't have any mention of the index and this is the index orientation and basically it starts with the index, so we have index zero, which is row zero. Then we have the column name, 
then the value, column name, value, column name, value. And if you have multiple indexes, um, you have zero, then you have these values, then you have one, you have these values, you have two, you have these values. You know, so basically the point of all of this is to show you that depending on how you want your JSON data to look, that will determine the orientation that you pick. And let's look at a few more. And the values orientation just gives you the values. So in this situation, we just have the values. We have, um, these are the values in the first row. It doesn't make any mention of the column name or the indexed number or index name in this situation. And if you had more than one row, you have a comma right here and then the next set of values. And last but not least, we are gonna go look at the tables orientation. And it looks just like a table. Yeah, basically creates a table for you with a schema and the data and the index. So that's really neat. So depending on what you're trying to achieve and what you want your end result to be, that will um, determine the different orientation that you pick. Now let's look at double precision. So double precision is what allows you to specify the number of decimals for float data. And this is what this looks like with that double precision. So if we look at uh, the duration right here, it says 189.5706. Um, this right here doesn't have a double precision. And with double precision, this is what the code is gonna look like, the output is gonna look like. As you can see here, we have duration, sequence so 189.57, because I put a double precision to be two. So instead of this long float decimal, we only have two decimal places. So now let's look at index option. So you can choose to include index or not include index. So, but this option is only available when the orientation is split. So the option to include or exclude index is only available with split orientation. If we go ahead and run this, and what you can see right here, this is what the split orientation looks like. And normally um, this is the index, and then it tells you the index number and then the data. All right, so if you don't want this index, then the, index number before you get data you can remove it and to do that is very simple so here you put orient equal to split and then you put index equal to false and as you can see right here the index is gone All right so you just have the column the column names and then you have data and then you have the values for those data index number is gone so you can you also have control over to include index or not to include index. But remember, it's only available when the orientation is split. So saving your output to file and indentation, right? So the indentation option is used to specify the length of white space between records, all right? And with that indent, this is what this record look like. So DF2, if I do here, if I do D, DF2 dot head, and as you can see here, this is what my DF2 data frame looks like. It has multiple, it has many, many rows, but I'm only gonna use the first five rows. And without providing any indentation, this is what it looks like. You know, everything is just like jumbled together. We have our list and we have the data right here. And this is the end of the data for the first row and this is the data for the second row and so forth and so on but with indentation we have white space now this is gonna look ugly when i do it but um, it's gonna look much better in a minute so with indentation right we have double white space we have double yeah double white space between data so here I have orient record, same thing, but here I put indent equal to two. Here there's no indentation. 
And as you can see right here, there's um, slash N, which indicates a new line. Now, just looking at this, it doesn't make sense to look super ugly. So we are going to take this data and we are going to put it in a JSON file. And it's going to look much better and it's going to make it easier to comprehend. To save your JSON to a file, you just add the name of the file here. So here we have the same code that we have above. The same code that I have here. Basically, I am locating the first five rows in this data and I'm converting it to JSON. Same code, first five rows converted to JSON, but the only difference is now I am adding df2. df2 no JSON. This is going to be the name of the file and I want my rotation to be record and keep an eye over here. This file right here, once I run it, it's going to show up here. Let's go ahead and run this. And as, as you can see right here, we have a new file called df2 no JSON. And if I double click and this is what the file looks like, we have a list and then we have JSON within that list. All right. And if we run the same code again, but this time we are going to name this um, df2 indent2 for clarity. And here I'm just going to do two for the indentation. All right. And I'm going to run this right here. And once I run it, as you can see, there's a new file called df2 indent2. And this is what it looks like. So this is what it, it looked like before with, with no indentation. And this is what it looks like now with um, indentation. Now, if we change the indentation here to five, it's gonna look it, it's gonna um, be more drastic. Let's call this five. And if we go ahead and open this, as you can see here, as you can see just a huge gap between the data, right? So you can provide your own indentation number. And I just wanted to do it two and then do five. Um, to kind of show you the, to make it more obvious that your indentation works. <laughs> so uh, there's that. And now last but not least, actually, well, I have two more things to show you. The first thing I'm going to show you is like the easiest one to work with. So since there's many different orientations and just different options, what is the easiest one to work with? I'll say that orient records is the easiest to work with because it is the easiest to convert back to JSON. So to convert your data frame, uh, to convert your JSON file back to data frame, we are gonna use um, DF2 indent. So here we do um, DF2 no indent. We can use uh, that also. So we created this file called df 2 no and here I am going to read it. And as you can see right here, um, this is the JSON file. So basically what I did is like I took this JSON and I converted it back to a data frame. So if you're looking to convert your JSON back into a data frame, this is one way to do it. In my previous video, I go into detail about um, reading JSON data files, but this is kind of like a preview and I'm going to put a link to that video in the comment section below. But the whole point of letting, telling you this is just let you know that if you have any goals of like turning your JSON back into a data frame, Orient record is kind of like the easiest to work with. So uh, last but not least, let's work on compression. So compression is all about zipping the output of your data. So as you can see uh, right here, when we did this, the output came out to be a JSON file, but the output can also come out to be a zip file. So when it comes um, to compression, you can zip the output and the default compression type is infer and, and it's based on the extension of the file. If no extension is provided, like .json is the extension for this. Um, it could be .csv, it could be .js, but of course, if you are converting data from to JSON, your extension should be .json. 
so in this situation there is no file extension and there's no compression provided right so we said df2.allocate which is like the first five rows we want to convert it to json and this is the name of the file the orientation is records and the indentation is two and in this situation if we just run this right it's still a json file right but it doesn't have dot json so you can still save your file without providing the dot json extension so if we scroll up here as you can see i here provided dot json but you can also save your data um, without providing any file extension it still comes out to be json so now i'm going to show you how to compress the output so the, to compress the output first i am going to um, create this parameter called compression options and it's going to be a dictionary and the method for the compression is going to be zip and the archive name is going to be df2com7.json and then i'm going to use it for compression and it's basically the same code i've been running before so locate the first five rows and i'm going to convert it to json and the name of the file is going to be df2 df 2 7zip the retention is going to be record the indentation is going to be two and here you do compression is equal to compression options so alternatively you could take this and put it here but it's much cleaner to define your compression options before you do this so basically it is going to what this is going to do it is going to create a zip file called um well let's just call it this df2 compression.zip and inside this zip file is going to be a a file called df2 compression 7.zip so let me go and run this and let me go and run this as you can see right here i have a new zip file called df2 compression.zip and i'm going to show you this file on my local computer so if we go to json lesson right here which is where i have this saved as you can see i have a folder called df2 compression dot zip if you double click inside it there is a file called df2 composition 7.json and if you right click on this and let me extract all extract and this is the same folder df2 and here is the file right here if you go back to vs code here this is the unzipped version of this zipped file and inside here we have the data so that's basically it for this tutorial on how to convert a data frame into json we covered different types of orientation we covered double precision we covered index we covered how to save your output to a file and working with indentation and we worked on compression if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the comment section below and share this video with other people. If you want access um, to this code that I use today, just go online to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. That's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And I'm going to put this link in the description below. And here you get access to this notebook and any other notebook that I use in my tutorials. So I create a lot of to data science tutorials and a lot of tech tutorials and i just found it easier and faster to put all those notebooks in one location so go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free to get access to this notebook and if you want to support my work directly you can go to machinelearningeducation.com and here you can click this button to support my work and if you come to my website and this home page has changed somewhere up here I'm going to have the link for you to support my work. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my website where I have data science uh, blogs and tutorials. And from here, you can also appreciate and support this blog and support my work. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.